Well, we'll continue in our look on the security situation. Uh, we're not being joined by Imam Abdurrahman Ahmad, is the missionary and Saruddin worldwide. He joins us from Abuja. Good morning and thanks for joining us, Imam. We're here again. I recall uh, so many times we've always talked about tolerance and how to stay out of trouble. And uh, now we'll see, in, uh, we just spoke uh, with a Shiite uh, spokesperson and uh, he just told us what's transpired. How does this sit with you, knowing full well that we have a whole lot on our plate in terms of security? Well, thank you, Suleiman. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you again. Um, first, let me say that Nigeria can ill afford another crisis on our hands, religious, ethnic, political, or economic. We already have more than enough that we're dealing with. And um, I want to urge all concerned that um, we should do everything to keep the peace. Um, it's quite unfortunate, quite unfortunate. And I believe that this is avoidable. It is unnecessary. Um, if we look at it from either side, le let me tell you, Suleiman, that um, I have limitations. I cannot uh, make... Um, uh, to what comments on these? I'll tell you the reason. The Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs is so deeply concerned about this development, and um, has been taking, you know, steps to ensure that, um, well, tensions are doused, uh, the peace is kept, and uh, the parties, as much as practicable, are reconciled. Uh, just yesterday. Um, an emergency expanded general purpose C committee meeting was called here in Abuja. That's the reason I'm in Abuja to deliberate on this matter. And um, at the end of the meeting, a contact group uh, was formed, of which I'm a member, to um, ensure that both sides are uh, you know, brought together and um, as much as possible. Um, you know, ensure that um, the crisis uh, did not progress from here. You could, you recall that Boko Haram did not start out as a violent group until their leader was extrajudicially assassinated. And uh, things have never been the same. We could learn from that and we could do everything to prevent a recurrence um, of that. For that reason, I will not be able to comment on, you know, who is right, who is wrong at this point. But we could, uh, you know, draw a few lessons um, from what has been happening to us as a country. And we should know that we're better together. We're better to stand together. We're better off peacefully. We're better off our economy, our well-being. Everything is better off. I am not saying that we could achieve this without justice. Justice is, um, uh, uh, it goes without saying, without justice there could be no peace. We should find a better way, much better way, and it's, it's possible, a much better way a more civil way of handling issues. First, we must conduct ourselves as religious groups, as uh, ethnic, as political groups, in a manner that will promote peace. Um, violence, um, civil disturbance is an ill wind that blows no one no good. Well, Imam Ahmad, for a lot of people, Nigerians watching, you know, they're a little in the dark as to you know, whether this is the first time we're, talk we're talking about Shiite movement. Maybe not the first time, but, you know, this is the first time it's been so pronounced because of the, uh, the crisis, the violence that it would seem the Nigerian army, uh, you know, wreaked on them. Just wondering, though, what exactly is the difference between the Shiites and the Sunni? Oftentimes when people talk about these groups, they always think of, you know, the Middle East. Not quite a number of people understood that, you know, this was also present here in Nigeria. The world, the world is a global village. If you could permit me to use that um, cliche, um, 
whatever is happening in any part of the world, you, you know, can easily affect other parts of the world. We're so interlinked. And that's why we must be very careful what we do. Um, the crisis now uh, that is brewing, we pray it's going to be nipped in the bud, is not as a result of the differences between the Shia and the Sunni. Wherever you find these differences resulting in war, you know that there are, you know, a lot of, um, you know, political and uh, cultural and ethnic underpinnings. Um, the, the Islamic movement in Nigeria, as they are called, um, had always been there. Um, the leader of the group, uh, Sheikh, Ibrahim Azazaki, um, you know, was also a member of the MSS. He was vice president international. And um, I can tell you, I was part of it. I was also in the MSS then. Um, the present uh, secretary general of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs was the vice president national that time. And um, everything was going well. But, you know, this is a country where, uh, and of course it's a world where there is freedom of belief, freedom of association. He chose to go that way, and it is his right. We may not um, all go along with him or, you know, agree with um, the, 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 the creed as a, as a whole. But we have found... Um, we have found, you know, accommodation, you know, for, for one another somehow. After all, the principle is, you know, live and let's live. Imam Akbar, we've, we were having a conversation backstage before we came on and has to do with issues around authority and religion. How should that be managed? Authority, constituted authority and religion. How should it be managed? Well, I, I don't think, I don't think uh, there is a problem with that um, because it's a fundamental principle of Islam that you um, uh, obey constituted authority. Whereas I am not passing judgment on what has happened in Zaria because I do not have the details, but I'm talking on the principle of obedience to constituted authority. In fact, in our creed, this is fundamental. You must obey constituted authority. Um, if there are issues, then um, the courts are there to sort it out. But um, Islam discourages uh, open rebellion against constituted authorities, except in extreme cases. Extreme cases and uh, these, these, these are really extreme cases. Those... There should be no conflict, I'm saying. There should be no conflict between religion and constituted authority, especially in a multi-religious society. Uh, some, some people may not understand the multi-religious nature or may not accept. Now, the issue is between secularism which is an ideology, which we reject out of hand, and secularity, which is a state policy to ensure a level playing ground for adherents of all faiths without discriminating against anyone. So in that regard, Nigeria as a multi-ethnic, multi-religious society should not have any problem with um, recognizing an authority because there is an authority in place. You know, that is where we come in here. Uh, I quite understand the difficulty you just might be in to try to explain this when you say, uh, well, there's a, a limit to which you can uh, explain some of this knowing full well. For the purpose of this discussion, Imam Abdurrahman Ahmad is not a sh member of the Shah movement. But uh, uh, perhaps uh, in trying to understand how uh, people can live, you know, we're talking about an inclusive life uh, in the polity, whereby irrespective of what your beliefs are, 
uh, we must all respect constituted authorities. Tell us the thinking of Islam. Uh, let's especiate more on that. What does Islam say when uh, you're a Muslim or a Muslim group uh, in a society like Nigeria? Do you respect the laws of the land or you do otherwise or you have your own set of laws? Well, you know, of course, um, Islam is not only a religion but a way of life. 